Hey everyone, this is Donald Morton, and I'm here at the Anthropology Lab at the University of Arkansas with Dr. Michael Plotkin. Did I pronounce it right? Close enough. <laughs> All right. And uh, we wanted to show you guys some fossils, uh, some cast of fossils of our ancient hominid ancestors. We talked about this on show five. We talked about human evolution and creationism, but I wanted to show some more concrete evidence. The creationists are always saying, show us the fossils. So, well, here they are. So, um, Mike, I just wanted to start off um, and ask what kind of evidence do we have for human evolution? What's the first evidence? Do um, you want to just line them up first? Or you want sure. To go through the Let's go through it from the, um, from the well, oldest to the newest. Here um, we have a uh, chimpanzee. It's, called, it's a plaster cast. Is this a modern chimp? Now, this would be a modern chimpanzee. And what you'll see about it is that it has a muzzle. What? It has large canine teeth. Uh, hanging out the front. Uh, the eyes are forward facing, but it has very large brow ridges, and the brain case is about the size of a grapefruit on this thing. And it's hafted onto the back of the skull here. It's not smoothly integrated into the face like yours and mine is, but it's actually, it seems like it's stuck onto the back of the face, stuck onto the front here. They seem very separate and distinctive from one another. Another thing to notice about it is if we turn the face over and you look at the palate, and that's the jaw, you'll see that the tooth rows here are long, and they're nearly parallel, and if anything, they converge towards the back of the mouth on this individual. So you have the long, parallel, or posteriorly convergent tooth rows on this uh, uh, chimpanzee. This is characteristic of apes. We know this for chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and also for a lot of fossil apes that we have. It's a very characteristic feature of an ape. So if you put this thing down and you start looking at the fossil hominids that we have, we have a couple here. This is a famous South African fossil. Um, it is Australopithecus africanus. If you, uh, it's a cast of this thing, so the black here is where the matrix was left on the fossil. Uh, they didn't want to chisel off the rock that it was found in um, to make sure that it didn't break. Uh, the top of the skull had broken off because of the way that it was collected, and it was known as Mrs. Please originally. And how old is this? Uh, these are South Africans, so they're around two million years old or so, a little more than two million years. So the dating on the South African fossils is not as precise as the East African, because these were found in cave deposits. Um, the dates are getting better, though. Um, as time goes along, there will be a paper published on that later this year where some dates are announced, but uh, they're going to wait on those until uh, the same thing on those until the publication actually comes out. And can we assume that at six or seven million years ago that our common answer would have looked similar to this, or is it hard to say? It would have looked fairly similar to this uh, in a more generalized fashion. It wouldn't have looked exactly like a chimpanzee. Chimps, chimps have been evolving as well. They've been evolving as well. And so it would have been somewhat more primitive. But we have uh, apes from the Miocene period uh, that are older than seven million years. And so we know what they did look like. We do what apes look generally look like. Yeah, and most apes have uh, skulls that look pretty similar to one another general form. So, so when really you get 7 million years ago, it's like this, yes. and then at 2 million years ago, we've got That's right. this. Because we have so many fossil apes, uh, we feel fairly confident that the best assumption at this point, unless we find otherwise, uh, is that the uh, skull would look something like that. Um, maybe slightly different, but it's in the general pattern, it'll look like a chimpanzee. So, so what kind of differences do we see in this well, one? Well, if you look at this one, the first thing you'll see is that the face is shorter. Uh, if you hold it up, you'll notice that it's got a muzzle. Right. So you right. can see the muzzle fairly clearly on this thing. But if you hold it up to the chimpanzee, you'll notice that it is shorter. Right. It looks smaller, but I guess it's just the muzzle is shorter. The muzzle is shorter. And what's happening is the whole face here, right? if you grab it with your hand, the whole face is being pulled underneath on this thing. So what's really happening is this muzzle is being reduced in size and then pulled back or retracted. And throughout human evolution, what we'll see getting up to a modern human is that you the, the change in the skull is almost like grabbing the back of the brain case and grabbing the front and then bending it like this to move the face underneath of the brain case. We call that kyphosis or bending of the skull. But you can see that here. It's not dramatic, but if you look at the skull, you can actually see that there is uh, some small degree of that going on. It's different from a chimpanzee. You'll see the brow ridges here are less developed. You'll see the brain case is round and globular like that of the chimpanzee and about the same size. It's only a little bit larger than that of the chimpanzee. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the skull, though, you'll see something very interesting. And that is the position of this hole, which is the frame and magnum. And that hole right there is where the spine uh, connects. That's where right. the neck sits on the, or connects to the base of the skull. 
And when you stand on two legs, you have to balance your head on top of your spine. And so to balance the head, you have to move the frame and magnum forward. So you're thinking of a the dog, skull. their their head right. is, they'd be looking up all the time. That's right, thinking. their head is held with the frame and magnum at the back of the skull here and not up underneath of the skull like this. And if you look at these two specimens and line them up, you'll see that the frame and magnum of this australopithecine here is moved forward underneath of the skull. And how do we know that? Uh, well, we can take calipers and we can measure it very carefully and reconstruct how that spine would sit. And this position right here is forward as it would be on a modern human up underneath the skull. And that's the first indication that this thing was actually standing on two legs. So there would have to be a time where it was moving in the trees sometimes, and walking bipedally sometimes in a Yes, that's... There'd have to be some kind of transitional period for it to move gradually. And the people who found and announced the Ardipithecus skeleton last fall are claiming that that specimen shows that transition. Um, we don't have casts of that because it's just been announced. Um, people have looked at it, and at this point I'd say that it's still under study. Uh, the scientific community is looking at it, and instead of hailing it as the great find, uh, really the scientists who actually study these things are looking very closely at it, and they're asking the questions, is it really a hominid? Did it really walk on two legs? Did it really climb trees? Is it really transitional? And that's the nature of science. It's not to simply accept what they said, but actually to say, okay, now let's look at the fossils. You've made this claim, and we're going to evaluate it and test it. But at the moment, the you know looking at the pictures and the analysis of that thing, it is pretty interesting in that it seems to show transition between an arboreal animal and a quite a very uh, ideal animal.